Oh, sorry. Kala ko nasa k-drama ako eh. Ano nga sa'yo? Oh, sorry. Forgot to turn off the subtitle. Hi guys! Jamil here from Auto Industria and this is the 2023 Hyundai Tucson. There have been four generations of the Tucson that has been here in the Philippine market and this particular model right here is the latest that has been launched by Hyundai Motor Philippines. There are two variants of the Tucson here in the market. We have the GLS Plus that's powered by a diesel engine but what we have right here is the GLS version with the gasoline engine. The GLS Plus is the top-of-the-line version, and this is the lower model in the range. So what can we expect from the Tucson GLS? Well, let's start off with the looks. It's unmistakable when you're out on the road, and that's what Hyundai is going for these days. We've seen it with the Creta, and the Stargazer, and the Staria. They all, they all have very distinct front ends. So once a Tucson is following you out on the road, you'll immediately identify one. We have this parametric grill right here, and when it's turned off, you'll actually see it looks like this is part of the grill, but it's actually your daytime running lamps, as well as the repeaters right in this point. This is a full LED lighting affair, even in the GLS variant, as you also have LED on the headlights itself. Moving over to the side, you'll notice that Hyundai was also aggressively designing the Hyundai Tucson in this area. Let's see, you have defined character lines, these creases right here, as well as the geometric shapes here at the side. So clearly, someone was paying attention to geometry class in the Hyundai Design Studio. But moving forward, you also have this nice chrome trims right here, the roof rails, and also this GLS variant has 18-inch wheels in two-tone finish, while the GLS Plus variant has bigger 19-inch wheels. Now let's move over to the back. As much as you can easily identify the Tucson from the front, the back end is just as recognizable because you have this LED light bar right here plus the fangs that make up your tail lights. Below it are your turn signals as well as the reverse light and the rear fog lamps. Also nice feature here, you'll notice the Hyundai logo is flat because it is well integrated into this panel right here. That's a nice touch. And one more thing, the wiper is stuck in here at the third brake lamp. So, very clean look and very cohesive. Now, let's check out the trunk. Since this is the GLS variant, you only have a manual lift gate. The power tailgate is reserved for the GLS Plus, which is the top-of-the-line model. But once you open the trunk, you'll notice that it's very roomy. From this point up to this point is about 37 inches long. This is about 40 inches wide, and the cargo height is about 28 inches. We also have this tonneau cover right here, so in case you don't want people to peek inside the vehicle and protect your precious belongings, this is very useful. Now you can roll them down, and these can also be removed. Also, we have this hidden trunk compartment right here that houses your full-size spare tire, your jacks, and can also put in some some stuff here at this area now for easier folding of the second row seats there's a tab right here that folds not fully but it does serve the job now once you do fold this you have about 62 inches of length and about 51 inches of cargo width now let's check out what's powering the Hyundai Tucson GLS. Downsizing and turbocharging are a common trend nowadays. But for the C-segment crossovers where the Hyundai Tucson belongs, you'll still find engines like this. It's a 2-liter, 4-cylinder, naturally aspirated unit called the Smart Stream G that makes around 156 horsepower and 192 newton meters of torque. Now, that's significantly less than what the GLS Plus with the diesel engine is making, the Hyundai Tucson GLS is also lighter than the top-of-the-line model. Also, you won't find a dual-clutch transmission or even a CVT with the Tucson GLS. This one has a six-speed automatic transmission that drives the front wheels. Now let's check out the interior. Most 
most manufacturers would actually employ a similar dashboard design to their almost their entire model range but with Hyundai they're doing it very different this looks nothing like the dashboard layout of the Creta the Stargazer or even you know the Staria minivan this is a very interesting cabin because Hyundai says they can, this dashboard was inspired by a waterfall and yeah we do agree because you know everything seems all the lines seem to be converging into this part right here in the middle we have an 8 inch touchscreen which has wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay which is very nice and below it you also have these uh, dual zone climate control functions but one thing you'll notice in this part right here is that there's very minimal buttons actually these are toggle switches and the buttons well actually in place of them are touch panels you know it's it's not the best when it comes to uh, being user friendly but it's better than having you know all these um, climate control and the infotainment um, settings embedded into the screen so you don't have to scroll around in the sub menus of the screen so it's better it's better it's not great but it's better than what we've experienced so far with the other vehicles that we've reviewed and moving on we also have two USB charging ports plus a 12 volt power outlet here below the uh, dual zone climate control and then this variant you also get wireless charging so that's very nice you have a pair of cup holders here and in this variant you get a lever type shifter for your uh, transmission the diesel variant actually has buttons so I think this one is much better when so you have the utmost feel of shifting and below it you have the drive modes here for the normal eco and sport you have a button for hill descent control uh, auto brake hold the electronic parking brake as well as the rear camera you also have a very generous console box right here so what else can we expect from the hyundai tucson gls well it also has this interesting button right here which is called the diffuse function actually what this does is it directs the um, air conditioning to these little holes right here so the cold air doesn't blast through your face it's pretty similar to what we first saw in the honda hrv also this sunshade right here has an extension so if you're not planning to have the hyundai tucson gls tinted then you can this one can be very useful now the steering wheel itself well this is a pretty familiar design because we've seen this one in the creta and the stargazer and even in you know the staria have a combination of toggle switches and physical buttons to control the infotainment system as well as the multi-information display and you also have the conventional um, cruise control button so not the adaptive one but it's okay so behind the steering wheel we have this 10 inch digital display which has very crisp details of the speedometer the tachometer and the multi-information display so you have the functions here that displays uh, the user settings for the driver assistance cluster lights door information for tire pressure you have to get moving uh, in order to get a read of uh, what the tire pressures are doing and you also have you know for the speedometer digital the digital display for the speedometer you also have the drive info so the trip info average fuel consumption and the time itself so right now we are at normal mode and once we switch over to eco the screen also changes that's also the same when you switch to sport you have this nice carbon fiber touches there so up to this point, you know, the Tucson GLS has a lot going for it and it's all well and good. But one thing you'll notice, the seat adjustment is manual. But for this price point, you would normally expect a power function. But anyway, let's move back to the second row and see what it looks like. Okay, so now that we're here at the second row of the Hyundai Tucson, you'll notice it's a very roomy cabin. I mean, check out all the space I have here in front. This part right here, the front seats have already been adjusted to Zach's liking. Zach is 6 feet tall and I'm 5 foot 9. But check out the knee room I have. This is about, you know, half a foot or so. Also have 
very nice elbow room and lots of headroom to play with actually you can even recline these seats further for a more comfortable time here at the second row so this is more like you know executive sedan levels of space which is very good here we have the ac vents as well as the type a usb charging ports a pair of them at the center you have the center armrest as well as two cup holders and you also have these isofix anchor points so in case you're going to put some your car seats for your babies or your, yeah you have them right here however we've noticed the center seat belts are still the lap belt type you know other newer models already come with 3.0 ELRs and at this price point you would normally expect it to come as standard but this is the case with the Hyundai Tucson so I do hope they update this sometime in the future Driving impressions of the Hyundai Tucson GLS. Honestly, I can say it in just two words. It's a smooth operator. You know, the level of refinement is great and it's something you can only get when you move up to a segment like this. It's very quiet inside. The NVH is excellent. You don't really hear much of the outside noises. And of course, this being a gasoline engine, you don't hear any rumble at all it's almost as if it's like a hybrid or an ev with the way it performs the two liter engine plus the six speed automatic it's a nice combination you know it's not gonna give you any rush when it comes to acceleration or it's not gonna excite you that much when you mash the throttle but it has its power though you though you have to keep it in mind that this one has a naturally aspirated engine so to access the power band you're gonna have to you know rev it up a bit higher so that means putting your foot a bit further down and really when it comes to riding comfort you know i have to say this is one of the best in its class it's really soaking up the bumps over here at edsa very well it's comfort oriented so handling won't be its best suit so if handling is what you're looking for, then you might be better off uh, on another vehicle. But with that being said, you know, being comfort oriented, the Tucson is still solid. It doesn't wobble around, so it, so it's, so it still feels nice and planted. But you do have to expect a bit of body roll once you do start turning at speeds. But when you're just cruising along. The Tucson is in its element. Keep in mind, it's a gasoline engine. And I'm doing around 60 kilometers per hour at EDSA right now. But it keeps the RPMs just below, just above, rather, 1,500 RPM. And even on the expressways, you know, the powertrain combination can also give nice fuel efficiency numbers because I was doing 100 kilometers per hour on the expressways and Apparently, the Tucson's engine is only doing around 2,000 RPM. Let's talk about the numbers. In the city, well, I've been averaging 7 kilometers per liter. Which is not so good, but not so bad either. But in the highway, that stretches out to 16 kilometers per liter. So that's already good, especially considering you have a large displacement gasoline engine. That's normally, you know, being associated with being a gas guzzler. Now, while the Tucson has a lot of nice things going for it when it comes to the driving itself, you do miss a bit of the advanced driving assist systems that we get nowadays from even, even vehicles in the lower segments, like B-segment for example. 
Hyundai can offer you know, the smart sense systems on the Creta and the Stargazer and that's what I found missing here in the Tucson you know, it doesn't have blind spot monitoring it doesn't have forward collision warning rear cross traffic alert that sort of stuff and even the adaptive cruise control so that's something I'd like to see with the Tucson going forward when they eventually you know, introduce some updates to this vehicle but if you don't really see those as a necessity then this one is pretty solid so what about the price and well, that's something we'll talk about once we go back to the warehouse Comfort, refinement, and size are at the top of your priority list, then the Hyundai Tucson GLS is a solid C-segment contender. It drives smoothly, and its powertrain combination is something that's been proven to last. But with a few more additions, we think the Hyundai Tucson GLS would have gone from good to great. We've noticed something's missing like the ADAS systems, the power rear doors, as well as the power seats, which would have given it better value. For 1,570,000 pesos, it's a solid choice, especially if you're not shopping for cars like smartphones. Like, I mean, it's simple enough that it has the right amount of features and you have less things to worry about in the long run. So what do you think of the Hyundai Tucson GLS? Let us know in the comments section down below. This is Jamil Lacuna of AutoIndustria.com. Thank you for watching.